Hey Next Attendees, my name is Dave Parker. I'm the VP of Product here at UpGlobal. Tonight's topic is big markets and big ideas. So what do you need to know as a first time entrepreneur, as a startup entrepreneur about big markets and big ideas? So I've written five bullet points out for you I want to cover today. Number one is ideas are not things. Remember your idea in and of itself isn't of any value until you convert that idea into something that's meaningful. That could be a website, that could be a mobile application, but the idea by itself isn't meaningful. You have to make it into something. It has to be a thing to actually have any value to it. So ideas in and of themselves, I know as much as your idea is special and your idea is precious, until it actually becomes a thing, it doesn't matter. The idea in itself and without the execution of your idea won't matter. So that's point number one with big markets and big ideas. Point number two is, is your idea in and of itself a feature? Is it a tool or is it a product? A lot of small ideas, and from a venture perspective or from an investor perspective, is a feature of somebody else's product. I'll give you an example. One of the companies I worked with in the past built this really cool feature that plugged into Facebook, and it was called a timeline. And three months after they finished one of the programs I was working with, guess what? Facebook announced a timeline. So, is your product that you're building is it a feature, or is it a product by itself? The second step and usually in that process is from feature to tool. So you've built something and it's really a tool that helps improve something. It helps conversion on a website, it helps people acquire new customers, it helps make it faster or cheaper for somebody to use a product they're already using. That's a tool. So without combining your tool with somebody else's product, the value's not super high. So a feature in and of itself, not a great value. A tool, more valuable but still not very valuable. Ultimately, you need a product or a solution. And that's the last step in that one. Is what you're building actually a product and a solution, or is it just a feature of somebody else's? So let me help you put that in context of launch and scale. You have a great vision. It's going to be a massive idea. You're building the next Google or the next Facebook, and it's going to be super huge. The problem is, is that's really at scale, not at launch. So, as you communicate this idea and as you communicate here in the next program what you're building, communicate the vision of what you're building, how big the market is. Anybody could use this. Wrong market. Not anybody can use it. You want to know who is actually going to use your product. So you have uh, the launch feature and the scale feature of it. Now, remember as you look at feature and product, and, and tools, you have to decide how you're going to get from one spot to another. If you're only selling the big vision of the product and the solution, but you're not going to tell people how you get there, you'll never prove that idea out. Now, let's talk about markets for a minute. Markets, typically we talk about in this idea of a total addressable market and a service addressable market. The total addressable market is anybody who drives a car. But the service addressable market is people who drive a car who need Bluetooth that don't have it already as a manufactured option inside of their car. So your market went from everybody in this massive market to a much smaller market. And your launch customer may be even a smaller market than that. So as you think of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, how you're launching your idea, think of your service address, your total addressable market and your service addressable launch market, and then again your market at launch. So launch, scale, remember they're two different things and don't confuse them as you talk to invest investors or potential partners. They need to know what you're doing today. All right, next is the state of the market. Are you selling your product into a market that's already a mature market or is it an emerging market? I'll give you an example. Uh, Yahoo had this product called a search engine and everybody's like, nobody's gonna uh, unthrown Yahoo until Google came around. And now people look at Google and say, well, nobody's gonna unthrown Google, but it, it happens in most markets. So the question is, is any mature market, are you trying to take on an incumbent in a mature market or are you launching a new product in a new market that is innovative and no one has ever done before? So two different problems. Big market, huge incumbent, big partner or big potential competitor. Small market, nobody knows your product exists. Now the good news in a big market is everybody's looking for your product, but you have a huge competitor. On a small market that no one knows, you can't go buy Google AdWords for a product that nobody is looking for because nobody's looking for your product. So you have to do something completely different and completely innovative to help them find a new market. So new market, existing market, mature market, or emerging market. 
Give you another example of an emerging market. If you're a market that's being served by the Indian market is maturing, more and more people are buying cars, you're going to sell a product into a market that's maturing. There's a way to look at market timing. You can be a little late to market or a little early to market, but the worst option is too early to market, which means you see the market as it's going to exist, but it doesn't exist that way today. And it could take 10 years for that market to mature, which means you're going to do a lot of work for about three years, then you're going to abandon the project, and then seven years later, someone's going to come along with your idea. It's amazing, but the market wasn't ready for it yet. And one of the things I'd encourage you to think about as you think about the market is, is the market mature enough for the product that you're trying to launch? So ask yourself those questions, mature, late stage, or emerging markets. All right, cost of customer acquisition. So this is a great topic because one of the things you have to think about as you look at a market is, can you go acquire a customer at reasonable economics with a heavy emphasis on reasonable economics? So if you're gonna go out and acquire a customer that it costs you $29 a month is your monthly subscription that you wanna charge for the product, but it costs you $2,000 to go out and acquire the customer, the question is, is can you go acquire a customer at a smaller price point? So if you're a B2B product, you probably have to have a higher price point because you need someone to actually go out and evangelize your product and sell your product to the market. If you have a B2C or a, a consumer-based application, the question there will be, how do you get people to refer your product to other people and acquire customers at a lower cost of acquisition? So remember, it's not just acquiring a customer that you're trying to take on as you look at the market, but it's the reasonable economics of acquiring a customer that you're trying to take on. So last, but clearly not least, as you look at this process, as you look at the market and you look at what you want to do, the question is, are you the right person to deliver this product to this market? So here's what I mean. Um, I, I worked with a venture capital fund. We went to go buy a company, and that company, um, its core market were teenagers. And we were a big international fund that was from Asia. So the idea of having a big Asian fund with older Asian guys hanging out, looking at teenagers as a, a market, was just kind of weird, right? We were the wrong market. We were the wrong person to do that. So you may have a great idea with a great market, but you don't have any knowledge of the market. You've never spent time in the market. You don't have years invested in the market. And the market's going to look at you and say, I just don't think you're the right person to deliver this. So if you're not the right person, but you have the right idea, the question then becomes is who can you go find? Who's that potential co-founder or who's that person you can go find to help you become the right person to deliver that product to that market? So last note on this idea of big ideas and big markets. You have to think about this in terms of what's fundable. So if you're looking for venture capital, if you're looking for outside investment, one of the things you need to look at is, is it a big enough market that can keep the investment that you have coming in and provide a great return for the investor? Because the investor is all about looking for their return. So in most venture capital cases, the question is, is can it be a hundred million dollar business? Can it, doesn't exist in a multi-billion dollar market? And if your answer is, well, it's not a multi-billion dollar market today, but it's gonna be a multi-billion dollar market in 10 years. Well, you may be a little early. So can it be a hundred million dollar business? I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the companies I was working with at one point came back and said, we have this great idea. We want to build a mobile app for organic farmers in western Washington to trade with other organic farmers. And I'm like, that's an interesting idea, but that's a hobby, not a business. Now, it doesn't make it less noble, and there's not a question here of good ideas or bad ideas. The question is, is if you need to go raise venture capital or if you're trying to go raise investment, you have to take on a big market and a big idea, and it can't be a hobby. So. Take these ideas into consideration as you think about your idea. Ask yourself some hard questions now because it takes as much time to build a little idea as it does to build a big idea. And if you're going to take the time to do it, take the time to build a big idea with a potential exit. Thanks very much.